Yo, my name is Benjamin and this is Forms in Framer. There's a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. To add new forms, head over to the insert panel, navigate to the form section. Here you'll find input components for email signups, our traditional embeds, and right on top, our new form builder. I'll drag and drop this onto my page to add our first new form. And out of the box, you get three inputs ready for you to customize. Name, email, and location. A text input, an email input, and a select control. Let's have a look at the structure first. Within the forms, you get a bunch of labels. These labels are just tags and they serve to connect the text layer within to the matching input. This is great for accessibility and it also means people can click the label to focus the input. Next, let's start customizing. I'll select the name input and let's first update the color. I'll set it to black. Then let's customize the typeface. I'll pick a custom typeface. Then let's change the fill color to white. And then I'll go ahead and remove the border and replace it with some stacked shadows. I'll speed up this section, but the summary is I'm adding three shadows, one as a solid outline, one as a solid drop shadow and one as a soft drop shadow. All right, and this is what we have so far. Just some lightweight customization. And let's do the same to the label. I'll select the text layer here and I'll be sure to give it the same custom typeface. And now that we've customized this first input, how do we bring over these styles to the other inputs? A simple way is to right click and copy the style and I'll often use the keyboard shortcut for this which you can find in the menu and then we can paste this style onto the other inputs and I'll do the same for the text layers using the keyboard shortcuts and finally the select control as well. By making all these elements directly selectable on a canvas, we've achieved a uniquely flexible editing experience. For example, to split up our name input, I'll select the label, Command D to duplicate, double click on the text label and write first and last name. Then I'll click on the first input and I'll update a few properties here. The name is what we'll see in the data later when you submit. I'll update the placeholder and I'll make this input required. Then I'll select this input and I'll do the same thing here. And now if we want to change the layout and bring these on the same line, I'll select both and I'll wrap them in a stack. Then I'll quickly set overflow to visible to ensure it doesn't clip our shadows and I'll change the direction. I'll also update the gap and just like that we've adjusted the design of our form and I can maybe select the form and make it a bit wider to give our inputs a bit more room. So forms in Framer are easy to customize and uniquely flexible when it comes to making them your own. Now I'll go back to our simpler version to talk about focus states. Very similar to hover effects and loop effects, we can select our input and add a focus effect. This allows us to customize the focus state with some lightweight styling like fill, border and shadow. Here I'm swapping the default border with a shadow with a one pixel spread and a blue color replacing the shadows we designed earlier. And using the copy and paste style shortcuts, I can bring over these focus effects to the email and location inputs. And instead of copy and pasting styles, I can also multi-select all of these inputs and for example, add a transition to our focus effect. 
And there we go. Now, before we give this a preview, let's quickly cover the submit button. The submit button is just a normal component with variants, and you can map these variants to the form state using this UI here. Now let's double click on the button to start customizing. Here we can see all of the variants, and by default we give you all of the variants you might need for your form. And here we can make a few edits. I'd like a bit of a darker color, and I'll update the hover state as well. Then I'll select the text labels in the default success and error variants, and I'll set them to the same custom typeface we've been using in our form. This time using a medium weight. And if you would like, you could customize everything within these variants down to the actual spinner, which is just a conic gradient with a loop effect. For now, I'll go back to the homepage and see how this looks in context. I think we're almost there. Maybe I'd like to go back and add a subtle shadow to the button. And I think we're good to go. So let's give this our very first preview. Here we can see our focus states, our text color that we changed from the placeholder color, our custom fonts, and our select control, which we'll talk about more later on in the video. Now we've customized our simple form, but it doesn't do anything yet when you hit submit. So let's talk about connectivity. Sending your form data somewhere is incredibly easy. With the form selected, head over to the form properties. And here we can pick between sending an email, using a webhook or sending our data to a Google Sheet. I'll go with email first. And here we can customize the email details like the email recipient, the email name, the subject, and even the email body, which is some copy preceding the form data. That's pretty much all we need to do. So let's go back to the preview here fill in our form again, and then see what happens. This time I'll hit submit, and we can also see the loading and thank you states of our button. And would you look at that, I've got mail. This is the email Framer will send me anytime I get a submission on a form on my site. With all of the messaging customizable and the data presented in a neat list. We support multiple destinations, so you can send your data to multiple places at once. But for now, let's remove email and have a look at connecting it to Google Sheets. I'm then presented with this simple pop-out where we can connect it to a sheet and we can define a fallback email. So we can let you know when their services stop working. So let's hit connect and start the authentication flow. If you have multiple accounts, first you have to pick one of your Google accounts, then you might have to sign in. And finally, give us access so we can send the data to a Google Sheet. Then back in Framer, we can now hit add to create a new sheet, which we can give a name here. I'll just call it demo and then hit create. And that's all there is to it. Now let's give our form a preview. Fill it out again. And then have a look at the Google Sheet. There's an easy way to access our sheet right from within Framer. I can reselect the form. Open the pop-out. And then clicking here will open the sheet. And lo and behold, there's our submission data automatically added to our Google Sheet, ready for us to export or connect to other third-party services. So that's how you can connect to Google Sheets. Next, let's talk about different input types. When you select a form, you get a plus icon right here on the canvas. And clicking it allows you to easily add new inputs to your forms. 
For example, we could add a checkbox to this form or a radio group. While there are four high level options in this menu, the generic input option supports many different types of inputs right from within the property panel. And each input type has a unique set of properties you can access by clicking on the input header. Like the select control, where you get an array of options allowing you to design your drop down menus. For example, I can quickly add two more cities. I need a value that's for the data and then a visual title that will appear in the menu. And then we can even add a little line to act as a separator, allowing us to create grouped menus. Or the checkbox, which also has a few unique properties like a checked state and a checked effect, which is very similar to the radio group with the biggest exception being that all radio elements need to have a shared name value. So all of these input types are similarly customizable and flexible. They all have a focus state and inputs like checkbox and radio also get a checked state. Let's have a look at a few more examples of these different types of inputs. We also support date and time inputs, which you can access through the type dropdown on any generic input. We've ensured these get consistent placeholders across various browsers and we give them a nice default icon. Inputs like date and time are useful for events or any type of scheduling and booking. Next is the select control. We already took a look at this one, but this is a more realistic example of how it could be implemented in a custom form. Next up, another example of a radio group. What's especially useful here is that the labels are also just text layers and they will be clickable out of the box. This also applies to checkboxes and you can even add inline links here with complete support for link styles, color styles and text styles. Next up, let's have a look at one of my favorite form features, component support. You can select any label containing the text layer and an input and turn it into a reusable component. This not only allows you to use variables, it also allows you to design your own focus and blur states. Here I've designed a custom focus state with a placeholder that animates into a label, just using a single text layer. And by selecting the input, and dragging from the interaction connector, we can define our own focus and blur state and switch to any given variant. We can even take into account whether or not a user has typed in the input. Or in other words, does this input have a value or not? So on focus, I'll switch to the second variant and this is where things get interesting because on blur, we only want to switch to the third variant when the user has typed in the input. So when the value is set, otherwise we simply want to switch back to the default variant. So on blur, when the value is empty, three interactions, three variants. Let's go ahead and give this a preview. Now, when we focus the input, we switch to the focus variant and our placeholder animates into a label. And if we unfocus or blur the input after having typed in the input, we properly switch to the third variant, ensuring the value and the placeholder never overlap. So you can use components to design your own interactive states. Next, let's talk about what you can do after having successfully submitted a form. Here I have designed a custom thank you page with a few simple appear effects. I can use the form to automatically redirect to this page after a successful submission. With the form selected, head over to the property panel and you'll find a redirect property. Here you can select any one of your pages. I'll select the thanks page and that's all there is to it. 
Now, when we fill out the form, we will be automatically redirected to the thank you page. And there we go. This gives you a lot of control, but what if you wanted to just update the form itself? We have an option for this as well. Now by default, we'll update the button state, but you can also turn your entire form into a component and then use variants and interactions to switch to a different state on submit. So here I've removed the redirect and I can select my form and by dragging the interaction connector, I can tell the form on success, switch to my second variant in which I've just hidden all of the inputs and designed a custom thank you state. So now when we fill out the form, we'll stay right here on this page, but our form will instantly hide and instead we'll switch to our custom variant. And that's pretty much it for this video. We're super excited to share forms with you. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more updates coming soon.